Hi, I'm Dustin Abbott, and over the last several years, I've come to you with a number of reviews of software software alternatives to popular editing software like you know Lightroom and Photoshop, and uh, when it comes to the photo end. Today, I'm here, however, to talk to you about an alternative to you know some of the more expensive uh, pieces of editing software like Premiere or. Um, uh, Vegas, things like that. And, and so anyway, I'm going to be looking at the Filmora Wondershare Pro or, or Filmora Pro today, which is a fully featured editing software that you can get if you wanted to do it on an annual subscription for under a hundred bucks or a lifetime subscription of only 150 bucks. And so let's jump in and let's take a look at what uh, Filmora Pro has to offer. So here's the uh, main view that you have when you open up the Filmora Pro software. And so uh, different panels, and we'll take a quick look at what each one of them does here. First of all, you have your media panel here. And of course, this is going to be your place to start. You can either use an import dialog or you can just uh, drag something in, which is what I'm gonna do here. We'll drag in this uh, little video clip here. And so then once you've got it here, you can drag that onto your timeline. And, uh, and so in this case, the control down here will allow you to uh, change the view of how long the timeline is going to be. I'm going to just remove that for a second and show you a feature that I do really like, first of all, however. Let's say that in this case, uh, there's something that I, you know, I don't want towards the beginning. And, and so in this case, I can just kind of drag along until I get to where I want. And uh, I can then, and in this case, let's say that at the very end of the clip, you know, let's say sometimes that, you know, if I'm doing something handheld as I did here, you know, you kind of, uh, as you're turning it off the camera, you kind of swing away. So let's say I want to eliminate a little bit of that footage. So then what I can do is I click out here. Now in this case, I'm going to now use the trimmed piece. And so I've eliminated the bits that I don't want. And so it's a quick way to do trimming even before you add it onto your timeline. Now quickly moving on here, if you click on the effects tab, you have a whole a massive amount of, of information that you can draw from here. And so uh, we're going to look at a, a quick a few couple of things here. First of all, um, using LUTs, lookup tables, is, is important if you're grading footage like this. So what I do is I drag that onto the actual clip, you know, and if I had multiple clips, I'd drag it onto the clip that I wanted. And so then up here under the control, and so here you can see there's a variety of different controls. It's got a number of different scopes that you can access. Um, you can do, you know, text type overlays, um, your layout and control over that. Going back to controls here for a moment. So here's the, uh, the you know, I've got the different information that's already there as a part of it. But under the LUT, I'm going to expand that. And so here I have the chance to add on a LUT file. So I've got a lot of different LUTs that I can use as a part of my grading. Um, here I'm just going to use something fairly straightforward that's just going to add in somewhat of an S curve back into there. Now obviously you've got a lot of different options that you're going to you know, have access to um, as a part of this. But I do want to just take a look at uh, another, another a few things here. And so first of all, I have a number of different ways of getting about getting to what I want. And so there are auto type things. So let's say I throw auto contrast on there. And in this case, it's actually done a pretty good job. It's, if I toggle that on and off up here, you can see that it's uh, made a good positive difference without losing a lot of information there. And you have some control here um, as to you know, how much you want Let's say that, you know, you don't want to, uh, you know, you want it kind of toned down a little bit. You do have some finite control over that. And so um, even on the auto things, you have a lot of options there. But, you know, I could also take the approach of throwing a curves on there. And so under curves, I can grab just the main RGB. And so either I could incorporate something in there or I could just, you know, do my own, um, you know, curve that I wanted to add into there. I could also go into individual channels and do that. Now, other things you can do is, um, you know, that I think is important is the hue, saturation, and lightness. And so in this case, you can uh, go by individual channels or you can just go and master. And so in this case, let's say that, you know, obviously with hue shift, you can, you know, kind of stylize footage if you're wanting to do that. I'm not so much looking to uh, accomplish that here. I'm more just uh, looking to 
uh, increase the saturation a little bit and so my colors pop a little bit more out of this. But obviously you could go further into each individual channel as well. Uh, I mean, tons of different options here, obviously, to get look that you want to your footage. Uh, you've got a lot of different, uh, you know, you can do transitions in terms of the audio or the uh, video transitions like that. So that's important. I'm going to do one other thing here, and that is that I want to add some sharpness to the actual footage. And uh, again, because I'm shooting in um, a, a log profile, and so it doesn't have a lot of native sharpening. So I'm just going to leave it as that, just for the sake, sake of this. And so this is just kind of showing you the grading aspect of that. Now, obviously, um, you also have audio mixer where you can do controls over that. Uh, we could do multiple clips here. And I'll show you quickly after we do the export. I'm just going to do all of the export here. And so I'm going to take off what I've already done. And so in this case, what I like to do is I like to, you know, save it in a certain area. So let's hear that I'm going to do a hair toss demonstration, what I'll call it. Now you have different built-in presets here for myself. I've kind of created my own custom one that has the what I want um, as a part of that and you can create uh, presets pretty easily there. So then um, if I click the uh, start export, you'll see that it, um, it shows a real-time rendering. Now on my computer, I have a pretty powerful workstation um, and so you can see that it's gonna hammer out to this clip at a pretty quick race here. Uh, or pace here and and so but I do find that comparing the rendering from the Filmora Pro to the, uh, the software that I typically use for rendering the Filmora does move a little bit more quickly so once it's uh, completed and you'll see that it took 53 seconds to do that rendering I can click on that and it'll actually open up the uh, the file and so let's just uh, take a look back here for a moment and uh, we'll look at the original for a second Now let's take a look at uh, what we've just done in terms of that quick grade there. And so you can see we've managed to create some really good looking footage in just a few seconds of editing and then outputting. Now in this case, I've got a number of different pieces uh, that I have shot and uh, these are all just um, you know, individual clips of I'm doing a review of a camera styled watch, camera themed watch. And so I've got a lot of different uh, pieces of footage that I have shot here individually. And, uh, and so what I've done is I have just dragged those various things on here. I've done some grading of the overall material. But in this case, I've actually done used some of the transition. I've used some of these other tools that allow you to either shorten or to overlap. And so there's a lot of different tools and you recommend that you watch the tutorials to learn how to uh, use things a little bit more thoroughly. But as you can see, um, I've got a number of different clips here and uh, I can explore those and uh, we can take a look at how that footage comes out after you know in each one of these cases I have worked to uh, you know just give an individual look and grading to the various pieces and so let's see how the little video comes out here So obviously that's just scratching the surface of what you can do in the software and time doesn't permit for me to demonstrate more thoroughly all the different things that you can do. I would recommend that you take a look at some of these tutorial areas that I have pointed out and, uh, and I'll throw some description to those down below if you want to kind of explore more fully whether or not, you know, 
Filmora Pro actually does what you want it to do, if it's capable of doing what you need it to do. But I can say this in terms of the time that I've been using the software. By watching some of the videos, um, I've picked up the learning curve pretty quickly, and so I don't think it's too intimidating when it comes to that. I've also noted that it's run entirely stably for me, and that's kind of a big deal to me. I've had, over the years, times past, I've had right in the middle of really important editing projects, I've had software crash and lose information and that obviously is pretty heartbreaking and so um, I'm so far I've had nothing but complete stability from uh, Filmora Wondershare Pro when it's uh, w running here and so I can attest to its positive for that but at the end of the day of course it comes down to price in that you know a lot of the software subscriptions that you're looking at you can you know put out quite a bit of money and so if you're one of those people that are looking to do some film edits um, but you don't have a big budget or you don't want to spend a lot of money or you want to have permanent access to your software at 149 bucks that's a pretty great way to get there there's also a uh, instead of the pro version there's a Filmora 9 software that is a little less you know robustly featured but you know is maybe better suited if you need less complexity you don't need to do color grading or some of the more advanced techniques so take a look in the description down below and there are links to various aspects of the software if you'd like to explore it more fully for yourself. You can get a, a free download and trial period and so you can try it for a while and see if it works for you. I'm Dustin Abbott and as always you can also find links there to follow me on social media including now on Instagram. Um, you can sign up for my newsletter or become a patron and get sneak previews of upcoming content every week. And of course, if you haven't already, please click that subscribe button right here on YouTube. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.